Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. In the last part we got a couple more pieces of Dracula, and now we're gonna continue on and actually beat the game. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, once you get all five uh, mansions out of the way, this game is... not that long, actually. Then again, uh, you're supposed to beat the game to get the best ending in under eight in-game hours. I think it's in-game hours. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, now that we go west of the guy we got the flame whip from, we can come over here to meet these flame enemies who can instant kill you, apparently. <laughs> I've never seen that happen. Apparently, if you crouch when their fire is on top of you, it actually squishes you. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm like the one person that doesn't mind the transition now, so... <laughs> In fact, I really like daytime. For one thing, not only do we have bloody tears, but we also have enemies that die in one shot now. And also, I'd like to go over something. Uh, then I actually forgot to mention exactly how powerful the uh, flame whip is. Let's put it like this: the original whip we have does one unit of damage, pretty much. The thorn whip does two. Chain whip does round four. And if I recall correctly, I think the Morningstar does either 6 or 8 times the amount of normal damage. But the uh, Flame Whip does 15 damage. <laughs> so pretty much, like, uh, skeletons in the next dungeon will take 30 Holy Waters. <laughs> yeah, they only take 2 more, uh, Flame Whips. And speaking of the final dungeon, welcome to it. I believe this is the Laruba Mansion. And while it's supposedly the most difficult, I actually find it to be one of the easier ones. The only reason it's difficult is because of the enemies and the damage they do. Other than that, there's no real problems here. I'm sad too, because this is the last time we're going to be hearing Dwelling of Doom, and I really do love this song. To the point where I'm even, uh, ducking along to it, apparently. A uh, majority of the enemies you're actually going to find here are just gray skeleton knights and gray knights. Which, mind you, isn't that bad of a thing, honestly. <laughs> now, actually, a fun little fact. This is actually the second time I actually recorded the episode because of reasons. And uh, first off, the oak stake guy is up here, and that actually leads to a bit of a funny story in the first recording. Uh, I was- I actually wasn't paying attention to where he was. And apparently, the Skeleton Knight was completely over right- lapping him right here. And I thought I killed the Skeleton Knight, but I couldn't see him for some reason. And I actually walked right into those spikes to the left, killing me. Ah, I gotta love... stuff like that. Mind you, the- the, the Oak Steak guy in this- Mansion in particular actually has the exact same color palette as the enemy, so at least my confusion is understandable to an extent. Also, this is me showing off something I forgot to mention about the diamond. You can only have three diamonds on screen at a time. Also, I just love seeing it get stuck like that. It's kind of funny. And I think uh, it takes four diamonds to kill these guys, which means uh, the diamond does roughly... Uh, let's see, 3 divided by 4, that's roughly 7.5 damage, I want to say? Maybe 8? Anyway, you're going to want to fall down here and make sure you don't hit these spikes. Or the really dickishly pl placed uh, laser arrows. Also, you're going to want to remember that corner for later, because there is something important there that I just forgot to show off until after this upcoming area. Anyway, welcome to the boss of this dungeon. Uh, I forget what this is called. I think it's just called a Haunted Mask. Though, uh, later versions of this enemy would be called Carmilla. Uh, basic strategy, uh, whip it in the face. As if you could whip it anywhere else. And when it attacks, crouch with the Dracula's rib, uh, equipped. Uh, he'll never touch you otherwise, unless you jump into him slash her. I'm gonna adjust my mic for a second. Oh, I guess I can't adjust it already. Hmm. Looks out of place. Really, the bosses in this game are all drastically disappointing. Although I was kind of nervous right here because he was dropping a lot of his attack. And he was didn't seem to have any sign of stopping, and that doesn't happen often. Luckily though, it, Camilla isn't that strong. And with that, we get the Magic Cross. 
Uh, you need this to beat the game, though, so keep that in mind. It shows up right up there next to the right of the Flame Whip. And here we actually have the final part of Dracula, which isn't even a part of Dracula. We got Dracula's ring, uh, ring the last procession in the game. Uh, both items you need to actually en enter the final area of the game, which is Castlevania. But along the way, as I backtrack out, there's this guy that I forgot to show off. He will fill your supply of laurels up to max. Or at least up to 8. I'm not sure if there's a max over 8. Anyway, now that we're done there, we actually want to head back to... This place. Uh, hmm. Uh, right outside the mansion, actually, because we need to go back to the area right past Bodley Mansion in order to progress. Bodley Mansion being the more recent dungeon. Poison Swamps are... Actually, Poison Swamps can actually avoid a lot of the damage just by, uh, jumping while you're in it. It'll reduce the damage rate tremendously, because if I recall correctly, Poison Swamps do damage exponentially over time. That's if I recall correctly, though. Also, I should mention, if uh, the Loruba Mansion, uh, Loruba Mansion, if you continue going to the left from it, you'll end up at the exact same graveyard we got the Silver Dagger at, actually. The map does loop, so yeah. Also, I should mention, there's nothing t on the upper levels of this room. The, the, only pl uh, the only place you should go after this point is to the final area of the game, which, Le Shock is the namesake of the series. <laughs> and I hate it when that happens. <laughs> you think you have one sub-weapon equipped, but you don't. <laughs> Honestly, whenever I listen to uh, Bloody Tears, I just can't get the Brennel Floss song out of my head. <laughs> Did I sing that at the, be at the beginning of the Let's Play? I forget. Hmm. Anyway, now that we're here, we want to head to the right of Bodley Mansion for we get mummies that actually drop the first full hearts in the game. I think they do give you 16 hearts, if I recall correctly. You also get some hawks and some Medusa heads on this screen as well. And we actually have what is the final screen, uh, final ma big town in the game. Uh, I forget what this place is called, actually. <laughs> also, apparently this guy recognizes us because this is actually the way towards Castlevania itself. Now, this is one of the only... In fact, this is the last town in the game that actually has a church. I don't remember how many churches are in the game, though. In fact, it's right there, and I was planning on using it, but... Time system. I get us you. Also, I should mention, uh, when you're indoors, particularly inside houses, churches, or, uh, mansions, time is frozen. So, uh, yeah. That's why it's very possible to beat the game in under the eight in-game hours, if I recall correctly, at least, to beat, uh, get the best ending. And here we are, actually, at one of the final screens of the game. <laughs> uh, it's actually very similar to one of these screens from much earlier in the game, if you recall, just to the right of Jova. Except these mermen have shots that go ludicrous speed and can kind of hurt. Luckily, like every other projectile in the game, the rib can reflect it, so yeah. Actually, I'm not sure why anyone would not have anything but the rib equipped most of the time, aside from maybe the occasional fang user. But then again, you get the fang so late in the game that's kind of useless. <laughs> or not, uh, sorry, not the fang, the, uh, nail. It's called the fang and everything else. <laughs> Anyway, you might remember these lizard men familiar, but now they fire a crap ton faster and more rapidly. But they're no big threat. Now, that's actually the last poison marsh in the game right there. Also, I might want to mention, for uh, the final area, area, you're going to want at least 256 hearts just to be safe. Because uh, you're going to be using the Sacred Flame quite a bit in it. Anyway, down here is actually the last town in the game. Well, last populated town. No, wait, no, uh, no, actually, uh, no, that was the last town, actually. Uh, sorry, I'm thinking of the wrong place. Uh, coming up here is the town of Goulash, I believe it's called. This place, aside from one person in the daytime, is completely n unpopulated. 
Also, we have freaking ravens. Or are they crows? I can't tell. Either way, they're annoying. Uh, the only guy in this town pretty much says, Will you live here with me? And uh, it's kind of creepy, actually. <laughs> I wonder if this is actually supposed to be the same kind of village area that's in uh, the DS Sorrow game. Huh. Anyway, we got mummies, and while they don't look like they're in the foreground, we got these uh, big gravestones, which are, in fact, uh, obstacles. So, yeah. Also, I mentioned uh, in the Zelda Let's Play, I've been watching a lot of AGDQ, <laughs> even though it's March and it's already past it. And, uh, good god, that beautiful Joe run. <laughs> also, the, uh, freaking DuckTales runs, holy. <laughs> anyway, uh, while this might look like an impassable point, you're just supposed to use your holy water on these two blocks right here. And welcome to the drawbridge to Castlevania. This didn't exist in the first game, although it's not even really a drawbridge, it's just a bridge. It wouldn't really become a drawbridge until Castlevania 4. <laughs> and with that, welcome to Castlevania. Another song I absolutely love, although it's really short and repetitive, and it's really just because it's eerie. And uh, Castlevania itself has been shrunken down tremendously since the first game. It's only a total of... I want to say four screens of, uh, no, actually, uh, probably like six screens now. Although there's, there's only one, uh, loading area in the entire castle. Uh, the only real obstacle is those blocks I destroyed with the holy water. <laughs> so pretty much after you destroy them, just get out your freaking sacred flame. Just jump over there, and you're pretty much in the clear from here. Actually, I can't understand uh, the castle being kind of shorter, because it was destroyed at the end of the last game, wasn't it? Eh. Anyway, equip your Sacred Flame, and run over to the next screen for the final boss fight of the game, which is also the third boss fight. <laughs> Salmon will automatically jump up, and throw these five or six pieces of Dracula we got. And then, the final boss begins. Pretty much just walk immediately to the left and throw Sacred Flames. Uh, you'll see his sprite probably barely appearing every now and then. Pretty much by spamming Sacred Flame, we're damaging him and stun-locking him. He won't do anything. I've actually never given him a chance to attack normally anyway, so I actually don't know what his attacks are. All I know is that if you touch him, he hurts. <laughs> like, I'm talking over half my life bar hurts. But luckily, he's rather easy and goes down. And here is where I show all three endings. Uh, the first one you get for taking longer than eight in-game hours, and I mean a lot, uh, continues. The battle... has... really slow... tech school, apparently. Consummated, pretty much, peace... Uh, rules overall. Peace and Serenity have been restored, blah, 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 blah. Simon, I believe, is also dead in this ending. What's really weird is that for being considered the be uh, worst ending, considering it's in color, and I think Simon's even dead. <laughs> uh, oddly enough, this is technically the happiest ending, because Dracula never comes back in this ending. Because Dracula's curse is over. Uh, Simon got rid of Dra Dracula permanently there. <laughs> Because uh, Dracula's curse is pretty much he comes back every 100 years. In fact, uh, let's put it like this. You have to use so many continu continues to get this ending, you kind of have to try to get it. <laughs> but yeah, Simon died in this ending, blah blah blah. Everyone dies, and yet everyone is happy, oddly. Oh well. <laughs> Also, I gotta admit, I love the ending theme. <laughs> but, yeah, that's an ending and a half. Uh, the second ending, which I'm about to show off, is the one I actually got during the playthrough. By the way, the game defaults to the uh, title screen after the, the credit, after the little ending. To get this one, you have to take over eight game in-game hours and use a few continues. And we actually get to see Simon in this one. And apparently, although Dracula has been defeated, 
Uh, Simon dies in full color. <laughs> in fact, I think him crouching there is him dying, I believe. Although I got it, I actually really like that sprite of uh, the grave. <laughs> I'm trying to read out what the dates is on. I think it said 1421 to 1471, which uh, makes no sense because, uh, as we learned in Castlevania 3, uh, Dracula was around for quite a while longer. <laughs> and if I recall correctly, Lament of Innocence is in canon. If that's the one that I think that has, uh, I think it was Claude Belmont. Although this ending uh, kind of hints at the next Belmont, who I'm trying to remember who was. I think uh, the Belmont after Simon was just Belmont? Pretty much this is saying that while Dracula's down for now, he will return and Simon died. <laughs> this might actually be the canon ending too, I'm not too sure. It's either this one or the next one. And the third ending is gotten by beating the game in under eight in-game hours or days, and using little to no continues. And this one's in Sunset. The encounter with Dracula apparently had little money. So, uh, freaking Dracula's dead, Simon lives on, and all is good. <laughs> this is pretty much considered the good ending only because Simon lives through it. <laughs> Which is kind of weird, too, considering there's kind of something that happens later on. Then again, it says it has put an end to the eternal darkness in Transylvania, which may or may not be a lie. And his blood will always live on, blah, 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 blah. They're saying it as if uh, Simon's the first Belmont, which we know for a fact, and now he's not. In fact, uh, going by some canons, he's like the third or fourth Belmont, I believe. Because there was Trevor, I think it was Claude, uh, Sonia. Yeah. I would read these dialogues, but uh, <laughs> they scroll so slowly, I don't feel like doing so. I do like the, that background, though, that little mountain graphic. That looks surprisingly decent for the NES. Although I wonder if there's actually that many mountains in Romania. I doubt it. But exclusive to this ending, Simon leaves, and in the middle of the night... Here's Johnny! Apparently Dracula lives, which is kind of odd. And like I said, for beating the game, you pretty much just get the title screen again. Nothing really past that. But that was Let's Play uh, Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. I personally find it to be underrated. I can understand why people don't like it that much. It does have design flaws that I will agree with. Like that freaking red gem uh, little thing that you had to do with the tornado. But I do have to admit, it did lead away to quite a few things, because this is technically the first Metroidvania title, which would later give way to Symphony of the Night and a lot of other games people love. Soundtrack I love. Aside from the time system being kind of a pain at times, and the one red gem thing, there's not really many negatives I have with the game. I overall really like it, actually. It's not my favorite Castlevania game. In fact, I'll say it's my least favorite game, uh, Castlevania game on the NES. But it doesn't mean it's a bad game at all. I recommend you try it if you have the uh, if you want to. In terms of the next Castlevania game I'll be doing, it's either going to be a replay of 3, or Castlevania 4, or maybe Rondo of Blood. I'm not sure. <laughs> But with that, I'm going to need to end this Let's Play off here. Thank you guys for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you guys next Let's Play, whatever that may be. See you guys then.